welcome back to the plant floor. My name is Sierra, and today we're gonna to be talking all about a really cool species of plant called moss. So moss is a non-vascular species of really prehistoric plant. They've been around for millions of years, and there are over 3,000 different species of moss. So moss, and I've got some fun examples here. Moss is really good if you have a tropical terrarium that you're trying to boost up the humidity or just add a little bit of tropical flair. You've probably seen moss outside. It likes to grow in rocks and little nooks and crannies, somewhere where it's dark and it's moist. Those are the preferred growing situations for moss. And if you make a lot of terrariums, something really awesome you can do is actually propagate your own moss and grow it at home. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is some of the different species of moss that we carry here at Josh's Frogs and then how to propagate your own species of moss. So, First, let's take a look at some of the different species we have. So right here, we have some mood moss. You can see that our mood moss here, it's a little wispy. And then we also carry a few different kinds of more aquatic moss, such as java moss, this really deep emerald green. And we also carry a Christmas moss. So sometimes you'll see moss that varies in color, sometimes a lime green, sometimes a brown color, and sometimes more of just an emerald green. All of those are normal moss colors. So what makes moss a moss, first of all? So mosses, like I mentioned, are very old plants and they are non-vascular, meaning that they do not have any stems that carries the nutrients from the roots of the plant all the way up to the top of the plant. So if we flip over this moss here, you can see there's no true roots. They just have what we call rhizomes, and that is what they use to connect with the actual soil. As a, compared to other plants, like let's look at this, let's look at this spider plant here. Other plants here, which actually has veins that carry nutrients from the soil all the way up to the top. Moss does not have that. So what it actually does, it just sits right on top of the soil and creeps along with its rhizomes. But because it does not connect to the soil, it makes it really easy to propagate and grow at home because you can just tear it off just like that. Another plant you might see sometimes paired with mosses are spike mosses or salaginellus. Spike mosses are not true mosses, but they grow in the same conditions. Um, they are not true mosses because if you look, you can see that they actually have roots, makes it not a moss, and they have veins that carry the nutrients up and down the plant. They're actually more related to ferns than mosses, but you can, all, you can usually find them growing in the same spot. And if you have a terrarium that holds moss, it can usually hold spike moss too, but they are not a true moss. So we'll just put these guys over here. So when we, here at Josh's Frogs, we have a few different sizes of moss that we carry. Right over here, we have our mood and our sheet moss, which comes in these big containers. We have one quart and two quart containers of our sheet and our mood moss. And then for our Christmas and our java moss, they just come in these little deli cups. So if you were thinking that you were gonna set up a terrarium and you already bought some moss and maybe you wanna make some terrariums later on in life, you can propagate your moss in a little moss container. So if you're making a moss container, first thing you're gonna want is a container. Something about shoebox size, uh, maybe a little, a little smaller, not too big, you wanna be able to move it around and it needs to be able to hold humidity so it shouldn't be too large. So first find good container, step one. Step two, I guess, make sure you have your moss ready. And then step three, we're gonna make, want to make a false bottom for our moss growing bin here. So we're gonna move these over to the side. They will come in handy later. So if I was going to propagate some moss, step one, we want we want to put down some river pebbles. You can use any kind of false bottom that you want to use, but the river pebbles, they work well at catching any excess soil or excess moisture that might fall down to the bottom. So we're gonna add our pebbles here. And a really good thing, really cool thing about moss is that it doesn't need a lot of light. So once you make this, you can kind of store it away until you're ready to use it again. So that's about so that's about a pretty good layer for our false bottom. 
And then we're gonna wanna add a charcoal layer. So we have some of our Sprig and Stone horticultural charcoal. And this will help to purify any water that passes through when we water our moss. So we're just gonna add a layer of charcoal here as a purification layer. So it doesn't need to be a very thick layer of charcoal, just enough to kind of cover it and allow the water to pass over it when you water your moss. Moss likes very wet conditions, so you're gonna make sure you do have something that purifies that water. And then lastly, you're gonna want a nice potting soil. This is our sprig and stone potting soil mix. This is a mix of peat and sphagnum moss as well as some perlite for drainage. And you're just gonna put that in there. You want not too thick, but the thing about moss is that it likes compact substrate. So once you get it in there, usually not for a lot of plants, but for moss, you wanna make sure you pat it down. It doesn't want very loose substrate. All right, and like I mentioned before, moss likes very wet conditions. So we're gonna go ahead and just give a little spray here. And if you are using tap water on your moss, this is purified water, um, but if you are using tap water, you do wanna use a dechlorinator. Um, this is our Josh's Frogs dechlorinator. It gets rid of any chlorites in the water to help make it safe for plants and animals. So go ahead and add that, get it nice and soaked. All right, and now we are ready to add our mosses. And we're gonna do a mixed moss container. That's a really cool thing about moss as well. They can grow together. They all like very similar conditions. So we're gonna start with our java moss here. And you can just take a little bit of it and it will spread out over time. So you can use the rest of it in your terrarium. There's no true roots, so it's fine if you just kind of separate it out like that. And it doesn't have true leaves either. So those little bits on there, they're not true leaves, but they're very close. If you think about plants in an evolutionary format, um, moss is gonna be the in-between between fully aquatic plants and terrestrial plants. So they like to be somewhere between there. Plants made their way out of the water and onto land. So these guys like a nice wet condition. So we add some of our java moss in there. And we're gonna add a little bit of our Christmas moss. And these mosses come in an assortment of tones. Usually they'll get to kind of a gold tone or sometimes fade to a deeper green. Both of those are perfectly normal. You just wanna make sure you don't see uh, any deep crispy browns or you're making sure you're not getting any kind of molding on your moss because that, that is a no-no. We don't want that. So we're gonna add some mood moss and this is our one quart mood moss. Gonna tear it. I prefer mood moss over sheet moss. It's got a nice fluffy texture to it. So you're just gonna grab a little clump and just kind of set it, just set it right on the dirt. And you can kind of separate them to keep an eye out of which species is which. And the rest of that is perfectly good to use for a terrarium. Also, they can it can stay in this container for a little bit, I wouldn't keep it in there for longer than like a, a week or two, because then it will start to dry out. And then we're gonna add some sheet moss. Sheet moss is incredibly popular in terrariums. It's very versatile, um, does not take a lot of upkeep to keep looking happy. So this is sheet moss, looks a lot like a fern. It's got those feathery leaves. So we're gonna take a little bit of sheet moss and adding mixed moss to your terrarium really gives it that wild feel. Because if you notice in the wild, moss, different moss species tend to grow together. All right, so now we got all of our mosses nice and secure in our little container here. And we're gonna give them a nice soak, give them a good spray. You don't want them drying out. That is, that is what will kill a moss if it gets too dry. Usually they won't complain about being too wet. We're gonna really get in there. 
And then over the course of the next few weeks or so, monitor your moss. Every few days or so, give it a good spray down. Make sure your soil is still consistently wet. Monitor your false bottom down here. Make sure there's not too much water accumulating because that will encourage bacteria and fungal growth. So really get it in there. Also, any container that you choose, you want to make sure it has a nice secure top because it needs to trap humidity. So once we're done spraying, And secure it on in there. Make sure we trap all our humidity in there. And then this can go somewhere where it gets maybe a couple hours of light per day. Too much light will fade your moss and start to dry it out. So this can go on a nice shady spot and just water it every couple of days. Then over the next few weeks, you will get moss that you can propagate and use. And you can use it to make fun things like this guy. And this is a moss terrarium. It's got a little Sigonium right in the middle there. It has very similar layers to what we did in our propagation station, but you can set this on your desk or pretty much put it wherever, and it has very low upkeep. So little moss containers are really cool. Also, you'll notice that the moss starts to spread over time, and they spread using something called spores. I brought a little example here. So when you're waiting for your moss to propagate, you'll notice over time that it will send out these little spores and that is what will actually spread the moss from one plant to another so that they can spread on. And they need wet conditions to complete that cycle. So if you do plan on propagating moss, make sure it stays wet, make sure it stays humid, and you'll have plenty of moss for quite some time. All right, there we go. Hopefully you guys learned some things, learned how to take care of some moss today. My name is Sierra, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.